uh, welcome everybody to this round table on internet uh, dimension of internal internationalization <coughs> in uh, studies in education which consists today in talking about how uh, non English speaking universities like uh, La Salle in Madrid and Arte Belde in Belgium have been able to introduce a, a small offer of ECTS in English, not only for their own students, but also for international students uh, coming to their universities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three presenters this morning from Artebelde University in Belgium. We have uh, Trudy Vandenberg, who is the responsible for international affairs there and Philippe O'Neill, who is the person in charge of mobility for uh, students in education in the in Arte Belde, specifically. <laughs> and we have also uh, Maria Jose Quintana from La Salle in Madrid. Uh, La Salle has a, a teacher education and also social education, and uh, she will tell us about uh, her experience as well. And we were expecting uh, Gerrit Jaritz from uh, Switzerland, but unfortunately, he was not able to join us today, uh, so we're going to miss him, but I'm sure we'll have a fruitful discussion with these two experiences that we have. And just before I give the floor to our presenters, I would just uh, like to remind uh, all of us present here about the, the context of this round table. Uh, as you know, in our school, which is the School of Philosophy and Educational Sciences in the University of Valencia, public university, uh, in Valencia, we have been trying to offer uh, some ECTS in English in the past two years with no success because uh, people, colleagues at the, our school had either fear or resistance or doubts uh, and they were able to see uh, that the benefits were worth the difficulties and obstacles that we might face uh, in this process. This has happened also at a time when the University of Valencia was trying to foster uh, the offer in English, and uh, we counted with the support of the vice rector. Uh, Valencia is a large uh, university, a large public university with over 40,000 students, and almost every uh, degree and an offer which goes over 100 different masters in all uh, disciplinary areas uh, of science. Uh, in the past, in our school, we had some offer in English and uh, elective uh, subject in social education, but the lecturers in charge of them decided not to offer it uh, any longer. And uh, also in our studies in philosophy, we have uh, some uh, subjects, been, a couple of subjects uh, being offered in English, which are precisely uh, to address the analysis of a, a philosophical text in English. And uh, the reason to, to teach it in English is, uh, is very clear for, for everyone. So uh, both the presenters and the attendants uh, are mm -hmm. well aware of these circumstances in our school. And what I would like now is to give the floor perhaps first to uh, Arte Belde and then to La Salle or alternatively as you wish to share with us your experience, how is it that you decided to introduce an offer in English, why you opted for English and not for a different uh, uh, language, foreign language. Uh, I know also this may be an issue for Arte Belde, where you have not only French but Flemish as well, uh, like we in Valencia have uh, Spanish and Catalan, and these are two official languages already in our school. So why you decide to offer it? Uh, uh, what obstacles and difficulties you have had to overcome, uh, how you managed to do mm -hmm. that, uh, what is the benefit that you see now after a period of doing that uh, in terms of uh, your institution but also the students learning, and uh, how you assess the experience as a whole. Uh, uh, is your institution, are you are, as people responsible, satisfied with what you are doing? Uh, how would you like to improve uh, your offer? Or are you thinking of uh, uh, letting it down because uh, it's not working as you expected? So I finish my, my speech here. I thank you again for your contributions and I'm eager to listen to your experience, whatever it is. Thank you very much. All right. I'll try to share my screen so that you can see our PowerPoint that we prepared. 
Perfect. We're seeing it, uh -huh. Trudy. Thank you. Shall I start, Philip? Or yes, please, yes. Do, do, do go okay. ahead. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, as uh, our dear colleague uh, told you, um, we are uh, Philip O'Neill. He is the international coordinator for our brand new expertise network in education, and um, where we have decided in Artevelde to collaborate more between different teacher training programs. And I am uh, Geertre, that's a very difficult name to pronounce, so you can call me Trudy. And I'm the international office officer for the Bachelor of Pre-Primary, which is uh, two and a half to six year olds, and early childhood education, which is closer, in fact, to your social education. Uh, mm -hmm. We have once uh, visited in uh, Valencia a couple of years ago with the uh, Comenius Association, and I remembered from their explanation there that there is a very big similarity between these two programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, today, I wanted to start uh, with this uh, quote from uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, and maybe you uh, know him also, um, who told us that uh, if you want to build a ship, you don't have to tell people what to do or to gather wood or to give orders, but you should teach the people to uh, long for the sea. And uh, this is something I wanted to tell you because um, when uh, we are talking about international semester programs, I think the most important question is why? Why are we doing this? Internationalization mm -hmm. is not an end in itself. It is a means to uh, achieve your goal. Uh, but what is that goal then? And that's an exercise that we have done in Artevelde together with our uh, teaching staff, with our team. Mm -hmm. and. Um, in Artevel, we have an educational concept in which we uh, state that we want to uh, prepare our students. We, do, we want them to develop our students while they are in Artevel during their bachelor's degrees, uh, not only on professional level, also on personal level. But the third and very important goal for us is the development to global citizens. We want them to be global citizens. And maybe for... Um, you know, in some uh, training programs, like for example, in a bachelor in uh, business management, it is quite obvious that it's important to work in an international context. But if we look at, for example, preschool teachers, uh, some uh, people in my team would say, why is this important for us uh, here? To, can you explain this? So that's what we've done. We have played uh, in, um, in a team meeting, we have played this little uh, game of life. I don't know if you have a Spanish version. In Dutch, it's called Levensweg. And we had a look at our students. And so we saw, for example, I took this girl, Anna. This is the day uh, she registered at Artevelde. She's standing at the student office with her uh, brand new card. And uh, of course, she's 18 years old, like most of our students are in uh, Artevelde when they start. So she, when she starts this year, a month ago. Uh, we hope that she will graduate in three years time on the 1st of September 2023. These are some pictures of our graduation party. And we say that of course we have to prepare Anna for her start in her career. When she starts as a teacher she has to be prepared in 2023 to manage a class all by herself. And in Belgium that's quite similar to you uh, to the Spanish situation. 25 little uh, preschoolers Altogether, So uh, we prepare her to, for 2023, but we also have to prepare her for 2067. At 2067, Anna will be uh, 67 years old and uh, hopefully for her she will be able to retire. I know that colleagues of mine who, see, who are 67 and see this picture are always very offended, but it's a bit of a joke. Um, but so this is 49 years from now. We are preparing her for 49 years from now in the future. That's a long period of time. If we have a step back and look at how society can change in 49 years, if you take 49 years ago from today, you would find in the United States of America, Richard Nixon, this lovely young man, uh, in the billboards, Rod Stewart was on number one, or this uh, Jose Feliciano, I'm sorry for my Spanish, uh, in Spain. And uh, the Lada was the car that my grandfather bought in the 70s. And when he drove around, he still didn't have any traffic jams. He would only get mail if the postman passed by his, uh, his house once a day. Uh, he didn't even have a telephone in the house, let alone a computer or 
internet that only exists 20 years after this. This just to illustrate that in 49 years, society changes a lot. And we say that it's important in education that students are global citizens, that they have the skills, the competences to face all the challenges that the world uh, will throw at them during these 49 years. And so uh, in uh, Belgium, we have had uh, a research by our uh, colleagues from uh, UCLL, and they have to thought about uh, global citizenships and how internationalization can play a role in this, in this developed to global citizens. And they have done this re research that's called ICOMS. If you will click on the ICOMS symbol, uh, you will be able to find the materials there. And they have said, look, um, these are competences that you can achieve easily by going on international adventures. But these competences can also be reached at home. You can also prepare students to become global citizens at home. And what are these competences that students, global citizens, should um, have? That's language skills. In Flanders, that's quite easily done. Uh, I think the main, main reason why we teach in English is because it's much easier for us to teach in English than in French. But uh, maybe Philip can uh, elaborate on that later on. Uh, intercultural competences. Global engagement to feel involved in the world and to see that global issues are also our problems. Uh, personal growth, of course, we see that students become much more independent uh, when they go abroad or when they uh, face uh, international uh, challenges at home. And inter international disciplinary learning, learning about your profession somewhere else, which can broaden your mind and give you a better view on your profession at home. So these are international competences. These are the competences that we strive for when we are preparing students to become global citizens. And of course, if you, of course, if you go abroad yourself, that's like a pressure cooker situation where these competences can be reached very fast. Um, but we also strive for these competences at home. And that's where this international semester programs that we organize can take up a big role for us. We see that internationalization can be a lever to achieve these competences easier. So, for example, we organize in the Bachelor of Preschool and in Early Childhood Education and also in Primary Education International Days for our students where they are confronted with international guest lecturers and they can discuss and broaden their mind. We also teach them in international classrooms. So uh, most of our courses nowadays in our international semester programs are set in international classrooms, which is a combination between our students and the international students. In Bridges, we used to do it just for the international students. Now we mix them more uh, so to, to help our students to uh, raise these uh, international competences. And of course, we offer them a variety of international experiences within or outside of Europe. So we see internationalization as a big uh, lever, um, a help to raise these competences. We'll tell you more about our international programs. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, uh, colleague here to, uh, to enlighten us with these um, goals, why we want to do um, these international semester programs. And as you can already see at those numbers there on the screen uh, before you, um, within the Artefeld University of Applied Sciences, we have are having an increasing number of students, of incoming students um, as a whole as the uh, university. So th these numbers are not only for our teacher trainings, uh, but for the entire university. Uh, so we can see that they are really uh, going up. That is because we are really profiling ourselves and we have uh, written these things out in our curricula and our goals. And we really want to do this. We really want to go forward. And as Julie already mentioned, since the 1st of September, we just had a reorganization within the university. And um, the thing is that they really made the choice to put on the management level, as to say so, um, really the choice for uh, international coordinators, besides coordinators for quality and uh, human resources, there is really uh, a coordinator for internationalization. So that really means that on the top level of our university, 
they really think this is a very important thing. And um, so we all have uh, these goals to achieve and work on these things. So we are really support supported. For example, our new dean, we have a new dean within these uh, teacher training uh, network. Um, uh, her name is Sophie. And she herself went a year on Erasmus to Sweden. So she really has the mindset of, yes, this is important. We really need to go forward with this. And so we all see the advantages of the goals that um, Geertre truly was just explaining. So within the teacher trainings, we have uh, created um, our own international semester program, which is called Bridges in Education. And this is a um, collaboration that has been standing for years now. And the name is obviously because we are uh, closing the gap or making bridges towards each other, um, towards the different uh, bachelors. And you can go to the next slide, Trudy. Um, so it's basically a collaboration between the four bachelors of uh, early childhood education, the one which is close to social, help me out there, Trudy. Social educators. That's the name, thank you. Uh, then pre-primary education, primary and secondary. Yeah? And we offer this in spring semester only. Um, so to show you some figures, uh, some numbers, you can also see that they, those numbers there are also gradually uh, going up. Um, for example, this year in Corona times, we have 38 students who are saying at this moment that they want to study uh, next year. And I didn't expect that much, I must say. Um, I, I think that there will still be some students who will be dropping out because they will perhaps last minute uh, not decide to travel uh, within these dangerous COVID times. But I, I also think that uh, that 38 years number is also quite of a, of a success, I think, because we have really set out a main um, standard within this uh, region. And to say something more about the regions where we uh, get our students from, this is um, a lovely map that uh, Geertre made <laughs> in 1718. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we just uh, picked up some photos. Uh, and um, as you can see, we have students from um, mainly the Erasmus zone, um, soon to be not Erasmus zone UK. <laughs> Let's see what that will be with Brexit, right? And besides that, um, we also have some income students. You can see they're from, uh, for example, South, South Korea and Curaçao. Now, Curaçao, that's an interesting thing because they are Dutch speaking, but also English speaking. So they're basically bilingual and they come in into our Bridges and Education program and then they take up English spoken subjects. But besides that, we can offer them um, Dutch um, teaching practice environment. Huh? For example, I don't know. Yeah, there is also a photo there from Belgium. Perhaps you might wonder, hey, this is a Belgian Erasmus thing. Why do you have Belgian students? Well, as you know, we in Belgium have um, two, well, actually three official languages, which, is, which are Dutch, French, and German. Uh, German is a small part. Dutch is the biggest language spoken in Belgium. So the, uh, at the other part of the language border in Wallonia, we have quite some students there coming from um, Walloon um, partner institutions wanting to uh, study here. Um, this year alone, we already have 11 students from Belgium, some of them from the Brussels region and others from the Walloon region within Belgium. So they come and study here because they're becoming a teacher secondary English Dutch and then they're taking up English subjects and besides that Dutch uh, teaching practice. So it's really interesting for them uh, as well. Okay, so it's a um, very nice thing to see a lot of um, cultures, a lot of diversity. Um, and as you can see, Spain <laughs> is uh, always uh, hugely uh, represented. Um, so we must be aware of that, that we um, have enough partners and diverse partnership um, between a lot of institutions so we can, um, so that we're not running a Spanish <laughs> Erasmus program, right? So you can go to the next slide. Yeah. 
you can see a photo. Um, I think it's a photo of two years ago of not so sunny Belgium, <laughs> because obviously they come in in um, midwinter, the first of February. Now, um, because of climate change, we don't have those strong winters anymore. So um, we're not exactly in Sweden, uh, where there's a lot of snow, but it's a bit chilly, yeah. And now, what we do during those um, during that first week, and also in in the the weeks to come uh, of that semester program and that Erasmus program, we invest quite a lot in um, group building activities. Eh? Because um, it's, it's not it's, it's not just, just about, about. Oh, I can hear myself there. Am I still online? Do you still hear me? Yeah. Can I go ahead? Yes. Yes, yes, we can hear you, Philippe. Thank you. <laughs> it, was just, it was just some error here. Um, the point that I want to make is that um, teaching an international classroom is not just translating your courses into English or French or whatever language you choose. Um, it's also being aware of the fact that this is an intercultural group. Huh? So you need to think also didactically how I'm going to approach this. Um, for example, until last year, I was teaching one of those courses as well. Um, and then I really invested in teamwork, uh, putting um, students together. And I made those, those decisions, which students were going to collaborate with, who, with, with which students, so that they really had to use their international competences. So they had to use their language skills, their intercultural competences. And nowadays, as Trudy already told you, um, we mix our incoming students with our own Belgian students. So that's really an intercultural setting there. Um, so when you want to do this, do not just translate it into English and other language. Um, think about how you will approach it. So this is a photo, for example, um, of um, the welcome day of our uh, group. And our dean is welcoming our students, so we think it's very important for them to uh, host them, a very warm welcome, and we offer them lunch, and then we do some, later in that week, some uh, group building activities within, within the city of Ghent, the beautiful city of Ghent, as I may say so. <laughs> we have some games together, they have pub crawls, uh, they go bowling together, um, go to the cinema and stuff like that. Uh, we really have our students from our own bachelors, from our Artefeld students, who has this, who have this as a um, as a subject basically. So our own students get credits for organizing these things. Eh? So we have a subject within our Bachelor of Secondary Education, which is called Internationalization at Home, and our students really have to prove that they are doing international kind of activities. Eh? So it's set out with goals and they have to do activities that meet up with the, those goals. And that's really an easy kind of subject because you just need a lecturer who is supervising that. And um, basically the students are doing the work themselves. And it's always nice uh, or nicer when students uh, do those activities instead of us lecturers who are older than the uh, incoming students. Uh, so it gives a good um, bond there. Uh, I can go to the next slide. This is another photo that proves that we are um, uh, taking care of our students <laughs> in the way that we offer them our certificate. Uh, so this is not the 1st of February anymore. You can see a lot of uh, girls and boys wearing shorts and, 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 and skirts. Um, so we uh, organize a reception there. So we uh, give them a little drink and we give them a certificate that states that they studied here at uh, Artevelde University of Applied Sciences at Bridges in Education. Huh? Um, and to tell you, obviously, this certificate has not a lot of value because it's just a certificate, it's not a diploma, uh, and it doesn't hold their marks, but it's just something that students can be proud of. And we try to create that, well, I studied in, in, in Ghent, Artevelde kind of feeling. Huh? So um, uh, to create this community, this uh, alumni, alumni kind of community. Um, so we think that is very uh, important. Right, Trudy. 
Uh, we also offer now a new program, and I wanted to stress this because we are trying to launch it uh, this year. But of course, Corona is also not working with us in there. Uh, in Teaching for Social Education, which is a, a program within the Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, as I explained to you. And there, uh, students can follow uh, courses together with our uh, Artevelde students uh, for also 30 ECTS. We have somewhat uh, 20 students from Artevelde who want to uh, follow these courses that they usually would do in Dutch, but they choose now to do it in English, and uh, they will join uh, the international students coming in. Um, and we hope for a nice uh, collaboration there between students. Yeah, and even once more there again, if I can add to what Trudy just said, even this, we do not only create this for our own students, for, for students, for, for our incoming students, but also for our own students. So we see it really as opportunities for our own and to profile ourselves as well to our partners. And mm. so we can really work on those um, global competences, uh, inter intercultural competences. Um, so for example, to, to go back to Bridges in Education, we really offer, as you say, so a buffet of different subjects where students, incoming students, can pick and can really pick, I want to do this and that. Huh? So they really compose their own program. And all of those subjects are given by the different bachelors, uh, the four bachelors um, in Bridging Education. OK. Now, um, was you, were you going to say that, Trudor, or is, that, is, is it back to me? <laughs> can't remember. You can what choose. <laughs> Okay. You know what? I'll do the opportunities and you can do the obstacles. <laughs> okay, I'll do this part. <laughs> um, we, as, as we told uh, several times now, we think it's a really good opportunity to enhance the outcomes of our students at home. Uh, and we see that students really evolve. We often, uh, these international um, courses, the international classrooms are set in the second year so that students can really feel, all right, I can uh, follow a course in English, they can raise their self-confidence in this foreign language by collaborating with the international students. And this can give them a little push to choose to go abroad in the third year for an Erasmus of their own or uh, an internship uh, somewhere else in the world. Um, we have, this is what we are calling uh, to raise mobility capital. Maybe some of you remember the um, presentation that Matt Enlund from uh, University College South Denmark uh, gave to the Community Association a long time ago, where she talked about this mobility capital, which says that if students are uh, doing short stays abroad or if they are um, confronted with international students, their mobility capital raises and that will uh, give them uh, the uh, initial, that, that will stimulate them to choose for international adventures themselves later on. And this is one of the problems that we have in my bachelor's degree for pre-primary education mostly, where we see that students don't very quickly choose to go abroad and this is a way for us to stimulate them to do it as well. Uh, what we also see is that by organizing these uh, English spoken uh, optional programs, uh, for example, like the Teaching for so uh, the Together for Social Education, um, where students can choose to do the same courses in English, that we attract a lot of new students. There is a type of student who uh, really loves to uh, have this opportunity, who thinks it's a big added value for their degree. And uh, most of the times these are very strong students. And so we think it's uh, very interesting for us to attract new students and uh, to position ourselves not only in the Flemish uh, landscape, but we also see that it positions our University of Applied Sciences in the international landscape. When we are talking to international partners and you can tell, look, we have a, a very good uh, elaborate program in English. Your students are more than welcome. We will take very good care of them. We can see that this can be the glue to uh, have a sustainable partnership uh, with these partners and makes us more interesting. We know, Philip and I said, if, if UV would have a completely English spoken uh, program, we would be very interested, of course, to send our students there. Of course. <laughs> Obstacles, Philip. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, obviously, every um, program and thing that you do has uh, their own challenges. Huh? 
And one of the challenges that I already mentioned a bit there is when teaching uh, students is not just about translating your course into English, uh, downloading it into or putting into Google Translate, and there, there we are finished. Huh? Um, so what you really need is a um, staff, a team that really knows how to deal with this. Huh? So not only do they need to know uh, language, need to know they, they need to have sufficient language skills, uh, but also another set of skills there as well. Now we in Flanders uh, are a bit lucky and in, in, the, in the beginning we thought it was not that a lucky thing, but eventually it is because our Flemish government, yes, we have different governments in Belgium. We are a federal state. Huh? So um, education is dealt with on a regional level and the Flemish uh, educational uh, area, so we have a Flemish uh, Minister of, of Education. They have decided that every lecturer in higher education who teaches in English must have a certificate of C1, a C1 level um, of English, so not B1, B2, whatever. No, you really must have that certificate. So a lot of our staff has been going through those um, exams. Uh, um, of English and taking courses and doing self-study things and uh, and I think now at this time because this decree it's not a law decree was from I think four or five years ago something like that right mm -hmm. and I think that now we're at around about if I have the latest numbers at around about 90 percent of our staff who has this C1 level already yeah? and I know for example one um, one lecturer who, did, who has just started two years ago with us, uh, she didn't have a C1, and now she's doing this um, this path of taking English um, on her own. Because we, from the Artevelde University, we organize those courses as well for our own staff. And we have now, and especially during Corona, this blended uh, thing where you sometimes go to uh, live sessions and online sessions, so they, they take really those um, things seriously to help our staff um, to develop them and their their professional uh, skills. So. But besides that, also our stu our um, not our students, but uh, our students as well, but our um, people who are working with us, our lecturers, need to be global citizens. So. And if you would apply, for example, Fernando now for a job at Artevelde University, you can see at the um, job offer that one of the sentences is that you must be a global citizen. Huh? So we really expect nowadays of our uh, new team members, staff coming in, um, that they are already having that mindset. Huh? And obviously we know that they don't have that mindset immediately. Uh, so we offer a lot of uh, opportunities to work together to meet up with our staff who is dealing with these issues. Huh? For example, we have this um, online platform, um, this um, a course basically, um, it's called Teaching an International Classroom, where you as a lecturer can um, sign up and you go through different steps and you do exercises at home, etc. Um, so you get aware of what it is to uh, teach an international classroom. And so it's really a team effort there, as you can already hear there, you really uh, shouldn't be doing this on your own and um, we are very lucky uh, through DNI that we formed this uh, team together with our colleagues from primary, pre-primary and secondary and early childhood. It's really um, a fun thing to do. I must say that I really enjoy my job uh, and we would even have enjoyed it even much more if this conversation would have been in Spain and not online, <laughs> obviously, but um, yeah. Then besides that, some other obstacles um, is administration. Huh? Um, in the past, we used to um, email with our students and then we would email them back and sign learning agreements and put them in PDF and attachments, etc. Now, since a few years, we have this wonderful uh, system, which is called Mobility Online. Huh? It's not that wonderful, we all hate it, but it helps us and it helps students to create a certain flow um, of things that they need to hand in. Um, and it is uh, the, the program um, from the, I think it's an Austrian developer that we hire, 
uh, SAP, which also will be used by the Erasmus Without Papers program. Um, so we're already using it a bit. So I can really tell that some of the um, partners where we are sending students to, where they don't have this system, it's really a handful to keep track of all of that administration. And especially when your program is becoming bigger and bigger, and when you just have like three or five incoming students, then you can manage. But when you have 70, 80 students, where, which we have sometimes, uh, um, you need this kind of administrative system. Um, so that can be a handful there. Huh? Besides that, another big one is accommodation, because um, even for us, when we send out students uh, or when we uh, sign new partnerships, and we go on a certain prospection or something like that. One of the first things that we need to assure our students is that you can offer uh, accommodation, which is more or less um, affordable or uh, a certain standard. Uh, we don't expect <laughs> really, really high standards, but um, for example, we have a certain partner and um, it's a lovely destination, but it's always difficult to find accommodation. Uh, so not a lot of students then will pick that destination right? because students also need that certainty right? and we have within our Artefelde University of Applied Sciences um, accommodation reserved for incoming students right? and I can tell you by the way that we are building a new uh, campus which will be finished in five or six years time they haven't started <laughs> building yet <laughs> we just hired the architect huh? but it's really an interesting pro process there as well because um, we have been invited by that team there to think from the internationalization international office perspective what are our, our needs for this new campus huh? and we really have stated for example that we want one or two studios mini apartments huh? not for our students but for our incoming staff huh? so we would really um, have this for incoming staff for example when one of you would be coming uh, in our international days, for example, and so you can really uh, use that. Um, because some um, institutions, because obviously if you could come, you would come on an uh, SDA or SDT budget, and then you have budget to pay for a hotel. Huh? But some institutions, financially, it's not that very obvious to do so. Um, when you go beyond the Erasmus zone, huh? Uh, and you invite um, lectures, sometimes it's nice to be able to offer that. Huh? And what we see now is that um, some of our colleagues um, offer um, the housing uh, within their own private home. I know that last year before Corona, first of the semester, we had a South African uh, colleague from a, a partner institution in South Africa who would be coming in and she had just uh, sufficient budget to pay for her travel and we provided uh, for all of her meals and a colleague provided a room within her private home. Huh? So something like that would really be nice if we could offer that. Huh? Besides that obviously insurance, uh, we have a for our own students an insurance um, company that offers us um, good um, yeah, support. Support, yeah, yeah. For example, when our um, students are in need, because huh, you don't always know when 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 something happens abroad, huh, there is this emergency telephone number that and our students uh, company takes care of that. Huh. And so, yeah, just mentioned all these things to show you that there are tons of practical arrangements that you need, need to think of. Huh. You really need to think of, I am an international student coming in, what are my needs? Huh? My needs are not just coming to um, Valencia and be there and have uh, fiesta. And <laughs> no, I want really uh, a, a quality, a quality uh, education, quality accommodation, uh, nice friends and stuff like that. Huh? So all of this proves that you need a strategy on a bigger level. So you need, you really need support from your dean or your management, uh, and um, yeah, you really need to have a strategy so not just a one shot or one will try whatever uh, you need to set up goals for the next few years and numbers and, um, um, I remember your question why would you like to do why, why, why would you do this in English huh? um, 
obviously we are doing this in English because if we would do this in French, we would have uh, not that big of amount of students coming in. Mm -hmm. um, English is the um, lingua franca nowadays in, um, in the world. Huh? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a very obvious reason why we do it in, in English and not in Chinese uh, or French. Even French, I think, um, although we live in Belgium, a lot of our colleagues are not that fluent in um, in French, yeah? uh, the majority is more fluent in English, yeah? so it's then easy to achieve that C1. Yeah? We also try to uh, communicate um, <laughs> in a um, in a proper way, um, and we try to reach uh, out towards the students uh, through own Instagram pages, uh, Facebook pages, and stuff like that. Uh, but in a week, we are being have, we're having a new uh, coordinator for um, communication within our new expertise network. Um, that uh, coordinator, her previous job was she was working at a television studio and a, uh, the Belgian version of Disney. <laughs> we have this company, which is called Studio 100, very popular. Uh, so really looking forward to her uh, point of views, how to communicate with that. Um, yeah, so. Oh. Don't know anything you'd like to add, perhaps, to that, Trudy, or have we said what I we think need? We've to said say? a lot. I'm uh, it, curious well, about uh, questions. Yeah. It is a lot. Thank you very much, both Trudy and Philip. Uh, it has been very interesting to put uh, our question for the debate on a wider perspective and to go back to the reasons and to speak about the strategy that you have as a university and a school. And I think it's very clear. Uh, I think it would be better to move now on to Maria Jose before uh, uh, jump into the questions that uh, the people might uh, put later on. Thank you very much uh, again. Okay. And Maria Jose, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me. Yes, I hope. Okay, first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you also to Gertrude and uh, Philip, because we sometimes forget why do, do we do things. Yeah? So just to listen, what is uh, internaliz internationalization and what students are learning when, when they are doing this experience. We just, uh, I think that we just, uh, having in mind when they come back from their experience and they tell us all of these experiences and we say yes this is the reason and I think that they they um, they explain to us in a very good way I really uh, love uh, listening to you when you are speaking about your yeah, yeah the global situation and what is uh, to be global yeah so I just thank you to you for that and now I will focus uh, on my presentation that uh, it is a little more focused on the theme of uh, English, yeah, on the model of English. I'm going to see a second. Okay, I hope it's going now. It is? Uh, you... Yet, Maria Jose, uh, if it is a file that you are sharing, you have to press the button uh, Start Sharing below the file. Oh, start Sharing. Al, si estás compartiendo un archivo, eh, sí. al darle a compartir contenido, bajo, al lado de la, del cuadrado con la flecha. Ah, compartir ahora. Y, compartir ahora y te pones ya sobre la página que quieres compartir. Perfecto. Perfecto. Okay. Now, now it's there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, we have an English model that we offer in La Salle for uh, many years. Well, I tell you about the about the model. Uh, this is a very general model that we offer also in a spring. Uh, we students have the option of having of being with us just three months or five months. 
normally. Um, I mean, for 20 ECTS or just for 30, we start at the end of January until the end of April. And if they stay, um, if they get, uh, they like to, to, to get 30 ECTS, they stay until the end of the semester. As you see, the, the, um, the, uh, the courses are very, uh, very general. Uh, we have Spanish language for some ECTS, then the Spanish education system. Uh, this is common for uh, teacher training, also for social education. Uh, so we have a course about the Spanish educational system, another one about gamification, another one about transmedia narratives, uh, practical uh, practice at bilingual schools, uh, and that's also for social education, because we really, this is one of the obstacles that we had for social educators, that um, if they like to do their placement at an NGO, we really need uh, international students to speak Spanish, because it's not, it's not so common that we speak English in, uh, in all NGOs, or yes, they can speak English, but always they speak Spanish at the same time. So uh, I tell you now one of the obstacles that we found for social educators here in Madrid. Then apart, so that's why we normally include them in, uh, at bilingual schools as well, because they are part of the English lesson uh, and work with uh, students, normally with uh, students uh, of higher levels, and they work with them in, uh, I mean, uh, they work in values or we, and they, uh, they work on, uh, on uh, dynamization, I mean, uh, but always inside the class. Yeah, that's the way that we have uh, created just to include social educators in this model, and that we can do some placement. Also, we have another uh, another course that is CAI, that is uh, International Activity Academy, uh, academic activity. And that we call ACAI, that is about health education. Okay, I will tell you more about that afterwards. That's about six. Uh, it, it, we offer that with six CTS grades. And then we have an optional course that is a LASAI a Transmedia Jam, that is during, during the weekend. Um, some positive things or some important well, this is also uh, the evolution of uh, the mobility in uh, CSU La Salle in Madrid. So as we see, we have increased also our numbers a lot from uh, 2014 until now. Yeah, so we, uh, we can see the evolution, which is very positive. Also, uh, the mobility in and the mobility out is very balanced that uh, take that in account because I will come back also to this idea, the balanced. And also, as you can see, the mobility that we have in La Salle uh, coming from our Erasmus partners is nearly the half of the mobility that we have. We, uh, we receive also many students who can speak Spanish who are coming from our uh, La Salian partners in the rest of the world. And, uh, uh, but uh, the most of our students are participating uh, when we are speaking about mobility, they are participating in Erasmus uh, programs, not in English. So as you see, uh, that is very important. I mean, Erasmus uh, programs are very important for us at, at uh, CSU La Salle in Madrid because the most of our students are going through Erasmus, as you can see. Uh, some important facts about this international model uh, that we are offering in La Salle. We are already, uh, this model is 
25 years old. So as you see, that's a tradition. I mean, that's something that we have been doing for many years already. Even this year that we were speaking about uh, the model uh, related to the corona, we were uh, we were speaking what we do we can do uh, this year are we going to offer the model not and the answer it was yes we have to do it i mean it's, it's a tradition i mean we cannot stop doing that anymore even if the students that we are receiving with this model are just 10 or 15 students every year this is as you see is not big number but it is important uh, and I tell you why afterwards some uh, some common uh, subjects uh, as you see we offer these common subjects to different degrees we offer that especially to teacher training and social education but also to social work transmedia narrative students occupational therapy and physiotherapy students and you will say, how is that possible? I mean, how is, possible, how is it possible to offer this to health students? Uh, of course, because we offer them very general pieces, uh, models, courses, but the difference that we offer them is the placement in different areas. And we have found um, in the most, in all uh, of the degrees, we have found placements where students can have their um, their uh, practice uh, taught in English. I mean, in English, we have found tutors who can, uh, who can uh, help the students uh, in English. So, um, I mean, this is just the difference between the different degrees. Which are the advantages of having this model? For us, this model is the coin to be able to send international students to our university partners. It's so clear. I mean, it's, like, it's as clear as it, as that. I mean, this is our coin or this is our way to, uh, to offer our students possibilities and international programs abroad. In that case, uh, with the, in this way, we can uh, we have balance. As I told you before between the students that we are sending and students that we are receiving at the end. Uh, that's why for us it's important and um, and it's a question of balance. Yeah, the model at the same time give give La Salle an important dimension, international dimension into the campus. Uh, of course, we have many other students who are coming uh, from different countries, especially Latin America. But also right now, we are receiving students from Philippines, from the United States, who are being involved in this international model. Before, we always offer this model just to uh, Erasmus students. But even now, that's our coin to offer the model to, uh, to countries out of the European Union, which is very important also for us. Just to start the conversation, to have a bilateral agreement with a university, we say, okay, yes, we offer international an international model, of course. So this is important also. This is important for us just to open a new bilateral agreement because we are speaking in the same uh, with the same options, yeah, and that's important. Um, also, uh, we have the Akai course into the model uh, that is about health education that I told you before, and this is a, this is a course that is also as uh, Trudy and Philip spoke before. This is for us a, a way, a key to include the international students with the local students. Because this Akai, the Akai model that is about health education, gives us the opportunity to offer a model that is for six ECTS, uh, uh, ECTS. Uh, and we offer that to Spanish students and to international students. So in that way, 
also to Spanish students from two difficult, different, uh, different faculties, health and education. So it's very interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting course because uh, we are there people, students and teachers as well, professors from the two faculties sharing the same subjects. I mean, uh, there's any other course at La Salle where we can uh, where we can uh, serve students from different degrees and faculties and also from different languages. So on that way, we have interdisciplinary, uh, in an inter in the interdisciplinary course and also international work, everything together. Um, we offer this, this is important also for our students in La Salle because we offer that course for free uh, and taught in English. So students who cannot uh, travel abroad can be part of this course and it's important for them just to have an international uh, course, an international experience and also to practice their English, which is very important in Spain. As you know, because that's uh, that's something that we 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 have to we have to improve in Spain in uh, in general. So, which are these, the disadvantages or challenges that we have in front of us now? Of course, one of the disadvantages is the economical cost. Of course, this is an, this is an extra cost for uh, for the, for the university college. Uh, a challenge that we would like to, 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 to get in the future is to include more professors and uh, more students from less who can speak English. The language is important and it's a big barrier for us uh, at international uh, experiences, just for teachers and for students. Um, also, that for the international students, is a challenge for us to offer something which is interesting for them. That's why we have included transmedia narratives in the last years, uh, which is very interesting. It's something new uh, in also for us and also for international students. Uh, so that's um, a challenge that we have also always to include new uh, courses that are interested for uh, international students and, of course, for, for our own students. Uh, another challenge that we have is to have uh, to include students from different countries in a model, because most of our international students are from Belgium. <laughs> Anyway, but of course we have from the Czech Republic, from uh, from uh, from Holland, from. But it's true that the most of our international students in this model are coming from Belgium. Uh, another challenge from for us right now is to include the online dimen dimension, especially for the Corona. We did it in the past in the last uh, uh, spring uh, when we found the Corona and we could handle with this with this uh, problem uh, in a very good way we think uh, right now we are using teams and Moodle in, a, in our regular lessons so that's something that we didn't do before but now yes or yes we have to do it and of course and that's something that we are doing especially during this year is to increase the inter internationalization at home and to share projects with university partners taught in English to have a more impact in regular lessons to involve more professor, uh, professors and students. Is that's, we are doing that in, in Spanish right now with our partners from La Salian universities in the world. As you know, we are a very international com uh, community. We have uh, about 60 universities, La Salian universities in the world. So, uh, uh, of course, we are international already just because of that. But we are now in the Corona moment um, increasing the projects that we are doing in our day by day lessons that are including the whole group. We are doing that in Spanish already. It is a uh, very uh, very uh, easy for us 
we were speaking about the Latin America uh, universities, and I think it will be very interesting to do that also with our Erasmus uh, partner universities to do projects in common with the whole curve, with the with the whole uh, with the whole. Uh, course uh, with all the students uh, between two teachers because just with teams and with Moodle we can do that with coil I don't I, I don't know if you are familiar with the coil courses with the collaborative online learning courses we are doing that already in space but of course I think this is a challenge to do that in English and that all of us at the university are familiar with the internationalization at home. So I think this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. This is my mail. I'm the international student coordinator at La Salle. I didn't, I didn't say that. But um, that's it, I think, by now. So if you like. Thank you very much, Maria Jose, for your presentation as well. Uh, and I have a couple of questions, but I'd rather give the floor to Ana, Carmen, Pilar, or Jose Angel, who have been listening to us for the past hour, and I'm sure they will have some comment or question query to, to put to you. So the floor is yours. Uh, as we are very few people, if you want, you can just uh, put on your microphone and then go ahead for the question. If you prefer to write it on the chat, you can do that as well or uh, raise your hand as you wish sorry fernando i think that you are you, i am sorry in still the uh, the presentation i think yes i'll i'll take it off i don't know how to take no. it out That's thank it. you no. <laughs> thank you so carmen ana pilar jose angel carmen go ahead okay Hi, good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? It's nice. All of <laughs> I really part of the internationalization that is to meet other friends, colleagues from other countries. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. Um. Uh, all you said in your presentation. Um. The question is to be for Judy and Philip. How did you choose at the beginning the courses to be taught in English? Can so you like, say that again, uh, Yeah, who decide, who made the decision of which courses will be taught in English and which courses will be not in English? Because here is a kind of big problem that, you know, like, I mean, who is going to teach in English and who is not going to teach in English? So that's, uh, I, I guess, in your university it was a long time ago. But if you remember or you know how uh, do you manage this, I will. I yeah. I'm not in the international program now, but I think they will really appreciate if you can remember how right. do you manage this. Well, I, I have been working now for um, nine or 10 years at Artefeld University. Um, so I can't remember exactly how it went in the beginning, but I can tell you something else. <laughs> um, within the Bachelor of Primary Education, we had a new curriculum two years ago, and then we decided we want the Erasmus courses within the curriculum, right? So then we thought of which subjects do we want within that? And, oh, Carmen is gone. I don't see you anymore. <laughs> Okay, but I think you can hear me, right? Um, so then we decided which ones we want to have within the curriculum. And we've decided to take those courses that are, um, let's say, not really necessary, but nice to have. For example, one of the courses now is um, art class, which is all about uh, visual arts and working with clay and paint and stuff like that. Our own students already have something like arts, so really make sure that we check those goals uh, for the, the, the Flemish goals then. And then the art class is a subject which is going a bit more deeper into the subject. Uh, 
or another one is, um, for example, uh, called pedagogical dilemmas. Uh, our students already had uh, pedag pedagogy, uh, but this really goes into um, a certain pedagogist. You say it like that. <laughs> they need to read Marta Nussbaum. They need to read a book and talk about uh, her work and stuff like that. So I think that the answer to your question is um, it, they're subjects where uh, that are nice and complementary to the standard curriculum. Huh? Not all of them, because uh, then I give the floor to Trudy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Hey, you were saying. Well, I was saying that um, that I saw you nodding because I was uh, reasoning from the point of view from the Bachelor of Primary Education, but in the Bachelor of Pre-Primary Education, where they're very smart and bright, <laughs> they decided that they really need that subject as a part of the curriculum. Huh? So they have the module um, Global Education, right? Awareness. Global Awareness, thank you. Um, and it is really a part of the curriculum of their own Flemish students of pre-primary. And the uh, incoming students already ta also take that uh, subject as well. Huh? I think if I can speak from the newer uh, courses or also the new program in the social educators, uh, which they have decided last year which courses they would choose. I think it's uh, it, you, you really have to look at the goals of the courses. Uh, for example, as Philip said, in global awareness, uh, the presence of uh, many different points of view is, is a big added value for the course. And also, uh, for example, in uh, Together for Social Education, they have a course on inclusion that can, in those courses, uh, having more than one point of view is, is really interesting. Uh, I think if you would have a course uh, talking about Belgian le legislation in early childhood education, there is the added value none, and uh, it would be a, a very bad idea. So I think you should look at the content of the course and where the uh, where you can find the global issues and the meeting points where students can discuss their mm -hmm. points of view. And I think we try to zoom in into certain topics and not make it too wide as well, because if we, as Trudy mentioned, if we would have a course like, uh, I don't know, Belgian education, I don't know, uh, it would be too broad. Um, we have some of those broad courses, for example, like Dutch, Dutch language, which is not really related to education, but some students really want to take some Dutch. Huh? Um, I prefer um, to send my students when, when I send students out that they don't take like uh, several courses of language courses. Huh? I think a language course is nice to have because you're part of that culture, but it shouldn't be the main focus. Thank you very much for your question, Carmen, and for your answers, Philippe and uh, Trudy, who have come back to you as uh, to me as a boomerang with uh, suggestions from Carmen to renew our curriculum. Uh, I, I know that. Um, thank you, Carmen. <laughs> uh, Anna, Pilar, would you like to ask something or to comment on something? Anna, go ahead, please. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, we see you. Yeah, OK. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Philip. <laughs> Hello, Trudy and Maria Jose. Um, OK, um, I, um, I would like to, to ask about the uh, the decision uh, it was coordinated uh, between all professors uh, in the degree or it was a, a decision uh, between a um, little group of uh, of professors for this this kind of subject so this kind of of teaching in english Um, is that a question for, 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 for us or for uh... Maria Jose? It's, it's for, for, the, the for you, Philippe, for, for Maria Jose, for Trudy. I guess uh, the question because... is, is for all, sorry, Anna, and, and to give you some context, perhaps, 
as a public university, we have uh, different committees who are in charge of taking certain decisions. When it comes when it comes to internationalization, the mobility team, which is, which is a committee itself, can suggest but cannot decide. The decide goes somewhere else, and mm. and therefore we find these obstacles among people related to to that, or queries even from colleagues who say that perhaps the quality of learning decreases when they are taught in English. If uh, either the lecturers or the students are not proficient enough, right? Or even sometimes lecturers uh, worrying that if uh, I, Fernando, offer my group in English, the other two groups teaching the same subject will be overloaded with students who will not want to come to a class in English because they prefer to get them in Spanish or Catalan. Uh, mm -hmm. th this as a context, but the, the decision, mm -hmm. the, the question that Anna made was, uh, who was deciding there? Who was the the people, uh, those involved directly in teaching in English, or a uh, broader the broader institution? If, if right. I take you right, Anna. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand your question a bit better now. I think it's really our institution nowadays. It's our institution who really sees the advantages and really uh, has a strategy on that. But years and years and years ago, when all of this started, I think I wasn't there, but it started very small. And we, we as, or some lecturers perhaps, had um, contacts, individual contacts, and that grew. And then mm -hmm. they went to their coordinator or, or dean, and they said, oh, this is interesting. And then they met each other. And I think you really should start with a personal story there. I think the key to internationalization is to invite people, so invite us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, <laughs> the point is, is, I think we can all see that also in the Comenius Association that that we're almost like friends there, and that we're friends. That really helps huh? when you have close contact, and you can really see the benefits, benefits, and you can really exchange and work together. Then you can build upon that. Huh? And um, sometimes you need to review that friendship or that partnership. And but because we we have this close contact, we're we're able to 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 speak and to say that perhaps we can collaborate in another way. So I think you really should start small with inviting some persons, um, very practical, offering them lunch, and don't go to a restaurant outside campus. No, do it on campus, yeah, in in the lecturers' room where other teachers can see you and then perhaps they're interested and hey hello this is and oh, oh Belgium oh Belgica yeah very nice yeah Gante yes nice <laughs> and stuff like that begins <laughs> and then we, we we chat with one another and then so you really should make opportunities for lecturers to meet huh? and for example that is one of the reasons that we organize these things like international days and we try mm -hmm. to involve mm -hmm. our lecturers huh? it's not only about offering our students nice and interesting courses or topics it's also about those little breaks and coffee moments uh, which are those little informal moments which are very interesting and then we make sure that our own lecturers are there as when when we know that for example a biologist from sweden comes in and gives a lecture well then i will talk to my biologist on campus and say you must be there huh? have a coffee together huh? and then mm. from from those little contacts perhaps and when it clicks and it's interesting or doesn't necessarily always have to click, but perhaps their program is interesting. Um, and, and then it helps, as Trudy mentioned, for example, we as Artevel, as when, when we do do that in those kind of social international settings, we can say, hey, we have this program, Bridges, and if you have students, just send them. Huh? I can remember a certain partner, and uh, let's call it an Anglo-Saxon partner, uh, a few years ago from the British Isles, <laughs> that they uh, they refused to to, to collaborate uh, on a, on a staff level, and they came into international days. And then um, they came in and they saw that we have a nice program. And she wanted to see the accommodation for herself. She took some photos. She went back, and then the year after they came back with some other team members. And then the year after that they sent students, and now we're collaborating. And so you see, it starts small and it grows and it grows and grows. Huh? Does that answer your question? Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think in I think partly yeah. Um, I think uh, you are talking about uh, something 
uh, more informal than um, I think uh, we would have to to do here something mm -hmm. um, a little bit formal and uh, as uh, Fernando said before uh, we, we have um, uh, many commissions and many groups uh, and uh, we, we have to to do some decisions in in this group and after that to affect to other people and is is i think is a little bit difficult <laughs> but uh, thank you for your words and i think is uh, um alternative uh, way to to do to do this thank you <laughs> I wanted to ask Thank you, Anna. Hey, Trudy, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, um, Trudy. Yeah. And I also wanted to push that button once. Uh, <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk to you about how uh, we uh, implemented this international classroom, because I heard you talking about if I'm teaching in English, then the other two courses will be uh, full with the Spanish students, and I will have less students, right? Yeah. And um, I know that uh, in the Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, we have now for a few years the module Education and Policy Making and International Perspective. And in the first year uh, that we organized this, students could choose between following it in Dutch or following it together with the international students in English. And in that first year where uh, the English course was taught, we had some extra um, support systems for students. The students got the course reader both in Dutch and in English so that they can compare if they're not uh, feeling very comfortable in English. They would be able to check in Dutch what it was. Uh, my colleagues also made two PowerPoints and in the aula they uh, presented on one side the English PowerPoint and on the other side the Dutch PowerPoint. That was the first year. And then, of course, we have a rule in Flanders which states that students can always, always take their exam in Dutch in their mother tongue. Yeah. So this, this combination made sure that students felt safe enough to go for it, to choose the English version. Because they said, oh, with all these support systems, for sure I will be able to have a good quality of lessons. What we see now is that the PowerPoint disappeared. That was the first step. The PowerPoint disappeared because uh, students said it's not necessary. We can perfectly understand everything. Nowadays, students uh, don't buy the course reader in Dutch anymore. They just buy it in English and the text is available online. And they say that's perfect for us. And it's even gone this far that from this year on, in the Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, everyone is following the English spoken course. So the Dutch course has been abolished, cancelled. The only support they still have is that they are still entitled to make the evaluation in Dutch because that's a law we can't go out. But this has been the evolution. I think it's important for a team to have that evolution, to convince the team that it is possible to teach in English and that quality isn't uh, challenged because of it. Thank you very much, Trudy. That's perfect. Maria Jose, go ahead, please. Okay. Regarding, well, just, to, just to say hello to Carmen and to Anna. And uh, regard, regarding the question of Anna, um, it's true that uh, the uh, La Salle University College is a private university attached to a public university, as you know. Uh, so it's different. I understand that uh, the Universidad de Valencia. But anyway, uh, I mean, the model started by the international team for sure, and of course, following a uh, strategy of the university. Uh, uh, and then we, uh, we have opened some years when we started high course, the, the course that's between, uh, it's with Spanish students and international students, we offer this uh, possibility to all teachers to be involved. But you are so, uh, you are so, um, 
I mean, uh, you have, I mean, you are so, uh, how do you say? It? Ah, you are so lucky. <laughs> you are so lucky just to have so many people who can, who would like to participate. You know, our teachers cannot or don't want. We don't have to choose, you know, because it's just uh, everybody more or less who would like to do it can do it. I mean, we don't have to choose. So for us, this is a problem of the English language for sure, and uh, uh, our need is just to, uh, to open the course to more teachers and, and professors, and uh, of course to the students. So, you're lucky. Yes, so I also wanted to raise my hand <laughs> to do it once. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we are already half past one. I guess you in Belgium, it, it's time for you to have lunch or <laughs> almost dinner. Uh, if, of course, if Anna, Pilar, Carmen, or Trudy, Philippe, Maria Jose want to share something else, please go ahead. I'm very happy with it. I'm I'm enthusiastic about the content of this round table, and I think uh, uh, what you are sharing is uh, relevant for us. And indeed, we have to rethink in our uh, institution uh, which might be the appropriate strategy to develop this further and, and how to gain support from colleagues and from students to, to uh, have them around. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So anyone else who wants to share? Final word, final push. I uh, wanted to share uh, a document with you. Uh, mm -hmm. In the Bachelor of Pre-Primary Education, we are now organizing international days. Normally, we would happily receive all your colleagues on staff mobility. That's also always a good idea, as Philip mentioned in the chat, to have them to experience that they can talk in English mm -hmm. and it is possible. Uh, but uh, nowadays, because of COVID, we don't do it uh, live. So we have now an online event. So that's they can always participate. Uh, we are gathering now videos of uh, English book videos of uh, about pre-primary education and uh, all topics related. And then people can uh, watch these videos. And we have in the afternoon on the 16th of November, we will organize discussion groups with students, a bit like this, where they can interact and talk about what they have seen just to get mm -hmm. the international vibe going so very welcome thank you very much trudy uh, we received information we have shared it among colleagues and hopefully someone is joining there and thanks one once more and i'm sure we will meet again in in a few days in our non klingenthal yes. meeting <laughs> autumn meeting this year Klingenthal so, at home <laughs> yeah, think it all at home. That's it. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. And the final round, if anyone wants to say something, please, Anna, Carmen, Pilar, or you. I think it was uh, very interesting to hear um, the others had questions also. They made us think as well. Um, I'm also very interested in the process that you're going through. So mm -hmm. if it's possible, I would like to keep uh, getting some updates on that and perhaps uh, more invitations. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's necessary, yes. but if you, I think we are always uh, willing to um, uh, go deeper into the subject if you like, and we're always uh, very reachable mm -hmm. for questions. And uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's just an interesting process that you're going through. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, Maria Jose. And I will be in touch with you uh, soon for other issues. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much uh, for very interesting. Uh, bye -bye. And yes, Carmen, if you want, you. Uh, we can stay. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.